And as I told you, this is a chance for the Eagles to build themselves a small dynasty here where they could rule the NFC East for the next five to seven years. Welcome back, our two national football show. Guys, please hit the like button. You guys know what three and ten represents? You have any idea what th- three and ten means? Any idea? Since 1998, that's the Dallas Cowboys postseason record. You heard me right. The Cowboys postseason record since 1998 is three and ten. Three and ten. Why what why such a horrible number? I think it just goes into the fact that it accentuates the greatness of Jimmy Johnson when Jimmy built that dynasty for Jerry Jones. They've never been able to get out of their own way. Where it is now, Ezekiel Elliott will be cut in the offseason unless he takes a drastic reduction in pay. And as I told you, this is a chance for the Eagles to build themselves a small dynasty here where they could rule the NFC East for the next five to seven years. I mean, you have draft equity here. Three first-round draft choices. 11 picks that will go with compensation picks up. You'll probably have as many as 15 picks by the time you get to the April draft. Okay? So you're in a position right now where you know history is on your side if you do it right. The freaking Cowboys are 3-10 since 1998, and you have potentially as... Many as 15 picks with three in the first round and cap space out the ass. This is the most important offseason in Philadelphia Eagle history. History. You've got to decide on your quarterback and you have the draft equity and you have money in free agency. It doesn't get any better in your lifetime the 2022. This offseason, by the way, I would say this to you too. Let's take one silver lining from this game. Okay? A lot of experience was learned in that debacle. Coaching, player, quarterback, assistant. When you're in over your head like it looked like they were all in over their head. You know one of those dunk tanks you see at a stupid radio-like remote and you try dunking the host and he's a dumbass? By the way, I've done that. (laughs) Sitting in dunk tanks. It was like Brady was throwing the ball at the thing that knocks the guy into the dunk tank. It just, it was, it was a carnival. Okay? It was a carnival. You have a chance here to really build your football team. Look, I'll tell you what. The shitty quarterbacks that are coming out of the college level this year, I have no interest in any one of those guys. So here's how my philosophy is going to be. And by the way, once we're now in the offseason, I'm not deviating off this at all. Okay? There's no games to be played. Now it's philosophy. Here's what I'm doing. I've got a piece of paper for this, so I'm going to write it down and remind all of you of it that I'm not, I don't change on this one. Unless Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, Derek Carr, maybe, maybe Jimmy Garoppolo. Guys, you can't get around – And you will not get around the fact that Jimmy G is 35 and 15 as a starting quarterback, and he has an NFC championship to boot with it. 
He's got an over 700 win percentage. You're not going to tell me he's not a good quarterback. You can't. The numbers don't say that. You may not think he's the shiny lure you want, like a Russell Wilson or Deshaun, but end of the day, okay? Okay? End of the day here, yeah, like Xander just said, and he went into AT&T and knocked the Cowboys out. Okay? This guy's got quite a resume. He's won over 70% of his football games. You may go like this. Well, I just don't like it. Why? What do you, well, because he's not Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson? I'll tell you this. You want to know something? Jimmy Garoppolo has been more to a recent Super Bowl than what Aaron Rodgers has been. And if it wasn't for an overthrow in the game, I think they beat the Chiefs. Jer- hey, Jeremiah, that's the only res- reservation I have about him is injuries. I think he played 15 ball games this year, though, if I'm not mistaken. By the way, if you're the 49ers and John Lynch, are you really going to move off of that guy? Are you – get this. And you traded up, and you gave – a myriad of picks away to get to that three hole to get Trey Lance. Are you really in this off season? What if Garoppolo goes to the NFC title game? He could wait a minute. 49ers versus the Packers. What's the one thing the Packers can't do? Stop the run. Holy cow. You're playing against a physical football team at San Francisco. Could the 49ers go up to green Bay and win that game? Absolutely. Absolutely. So if I'm Howie Roseman and I'm looking at Jimmy G, he goes up and watch this. He knocks Dak out in Dallas, and then he goes up to Green Bay and knocks Aaron Rodgers out. Garoppolo then has to go down to Tampa, potentially, and play Brady down there for the NFC title game. Lou says, damn, near everybody been shutting me down when I say Jimmy G. Lou! Their, their argument is because he's not as well-known as the other guys and because he gets hurt. But, hey, Chris, nobody saw the Niners rolling into Dallas and pounding them that way. BF, you're damn right. Those Niners are dogs, and they're big and physical. Who am I picking? We'll get closer to the end of the week here. So listen, here my go. Follow me here. Unless Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, Derek Carr, or Jimmy G, those are the quarterbacks. Those are the four quarterbacks I would have on my radar. The rest of them, you can keep them. Jared Goffs and these other losers. Sam Darnold's and those guys. I don't want anything to do with those. I'm all right with Jalen. Unless one of those four guys goes, hey, I'll put my hand up and listen to Philly. I have no interest in changing my quarterback out right now. I I have no interest in starting over again. I'm going to take what happened on Sunday and move forward. Like I said, though, I am going to kick the tires on Garoppolo. Carr. What's the likelihood? Watch this. What's the likelihood of me having a conversation with John Lynch in San Francisco about Jimmy G? Probably 95%. I could see Garoppolo in Pittsburgh. Derek Carr. Depends who they hire as coach. If Bisacci doesn't get that job, Carr made it very clear he wants out. Okay? I say that that is more of a that's more of a 15% chance for Derek Carr. Deshaun Watson, with all the things that are going on in his life, with all the draft equity that the Eagles have, both teams will definitely listen. Watson has a no trade too, though. Okay? He's got a no trade in there. The chances that Howie picks the phone up and talks to Nick Casario, the GM of the Texans, it's probably 70%. Remember, Texans want to move him. They want to get out from under the guy. 
Now, get this. There's a comment saying that maybe if they hire Brian Flores, he'll stay. You still got the people upstairs, the McNairs, who own the team. Chances of Russell Wilson coming to Philly, 5%. At least right now, Garoppolo is your best chance of having big-time conversations on. The second will be Deshaun Watson. Third would be Carr, but low. And Russell's going to pick a place that's going to be – remember something, though. He's got to pick a place to win. He just can't go – well, you know – I heard I heard Gary Cobb go. Well, go to New. Why would you go to New York? They they haven't got the coach right. They haven't got the GM right, and they haven't got the quarterback right since Eli left. Why would I go there? The Giants are. That's not a place for a veteran quarterback to go, especially with one of the worst O lines in the NFL. Chris R says. Much like the Colts, we really rely on the run game and limit QB touches. Yeah, but Chris, tell me the difference in what's going on in San Francisco compared to Philadelphia. You've actually got to match that up. Garoppolo is not asked to throw the ball 50 freaking times to win a ball game. They rely on a running attack. Garoppolo, in my opinion, would be great in Indianapolis. Great in Pittsburgh. Great in Philly. Places that run the rock. Okay? Garoppolo is going to make you plays in the game, but he's not going to make every play. Like some of these guys, like Josh. Josh Allen, folks, has to make every play for the Bills to win. Right? Aaron Rodgers is relying on, if Aaron Rodgers is not on the Green Bay Packers, the Packers are a five-win team at best. Okay? Keith says, I like Pickett, but Washington, you can have him. I have no interest in that dude. Over Jalen? No, thank you. Lou says, I think Jimmy G is more likely than any other free agent quarterback. Hey, and get this, he's good. Seals, if you're on the call with Russell Wilson, what do you think the response is when we've got Rager and Whiteside? Okay, true. But then here's what I do, my friend. I go like this. Yeah, but we also have the best old line in the NFL. And a couple free agent signings on the wide receiver position, we can change that overnight. Wide receivers are dime a dozen. Offensive lines are – are as hard to build as finding a franchise quarterback. You know, how many free agent offensive linemen do you ever see on the open market? None. When I saw Orlando Brown and Trent Williams, okay, potentially being traded, they were never free agents. They made deals for them and trades for them. Kansas City restructured Patrick Mahomes' deal to get Orlando Brown in the building. Remember? They restructured it, and they had just given him that $500 million contract. You don't find guys like that. Chris says Mitchie will be traded, probably. You can get a 4 or 5 for him. Nicobe Dean's a hell of a football player from Georgia Keith. That kid can play. I like Jordan Davis, too. I like that linebacker that it's at Alabama, but I think he's got another year. Tampa has an extra day of rest, I know. It, how that whole thing has worked out for the Bucs, I think Brady may get to another NFC title game or another championship game. OG, OG, I don't know what that means on the, the price tag for Devontae because I look at Devontae, they don't know what to do with him. They don't have a signal caller that can get him the ball. Wentz comes back in two years. Thank you, Lawrence. I don't think so. The LB from Utah is a good player. I voted for him for um, the All-American team. I can't remember his name. How we will make the call regarding Jimmy G and Watson. See, guys, I think we've narrowed it down. Do we agree? Because, look, I'm telling you about where, how and how I'm looking at this. Do we agree? Let's do common sense. Let's take Russell Wilson 
and Aaron Rodgers out of the conversation. Please. Let's not talk like idiots in other markets. Okay? That's the shit people talk like in Chicago and New Orleans and some of these other places that there's no chance you're getting them. Why waste your breath? You're not getting Aaron Rodgers, okay? And you're not getting Russell Wilson. Just just take that out, okay? You may have a shot here at Jimmy G and Deshaun Watson, okay? Those two guys, how he's going to make a run at. With the draft choices, I would say this. Let's just go over here and go like this. 11 picks. First, second, and let's do just three rounds for now. I'm going to take one of my first round picks. I'm going to trade out, split it up, and get two first round picks. The latter round in the first down in the low 20s or uh, high 20s and one for next year. Two picks. Howie doesn't like a linebacker. Let's get an edge rusher. Let's get the kid Thibodeau from Oregon. You could parlay that up and go like this to a team that's got a pick in front of you. Let's take that pick that you just parlayed for next year and tell the team this year, listen, you'll get a first next year and our first here at 26, we want to move up to four to get Thibodeau. You can move around like that using the three first-round draft choices and cutting these first-round picks up into multiple picks and multiple opportunities to move up and down in the draft. I'll have Jimmy Johnson send me the value chart for the Eagles. You know what the value chart is? It's how he built the Dallas dynasty. Okay? I posted it before on my Twitter page, at Dan Cilio Show. Jimmy had a value chart that he created. He didn't give a shit what the name was. He didn't care what the name on the back of the jersey was. He went value. Who's here in the second round with the best value? Jimmy would draft him, or he would trade down to another team that wanted him, and parlay that into more, more picks. Do you know in a five-year period, Jimmy Johnson traded 58 times for players? Linebacker, edge rusher, may have to use one this year, low to change positions, and you get the other one next year that you're hoping is a low pick as well. So you can move up to four or five to get your guy you want. Use your other first round that you have to take a linebacker. So you've taken a linebacker and an edge rusher, and you've created another opportunity for you to have another first round pick next year. So you'll have two picks next year, two quality players, potentially between four and 15. To me, that sounds like a deal, guys. I don't care what the name says on the back of the jersey. I want to know who the best player is at four and 15, especially at the need positions. LB and edge rusher. Got to get pressure on the quarterback. Second round, I'm going to do everything I can to, to improve the number one area I need to now. I don't want any more wormy wideouts. No more of those wormy dudes. I want a possession wide out. I want a guy like Samuel with the 49ers. I want that kid. That's the kid I want. I want that guy to be on the other side of Devontae Smith. I want that. I'm going to take my other picks in a second, and I'm going to increase and improve my offensive line. Have to keep retooling that line, creating depth. D-line and O-line, that's where I'm going here. Third round, I'm getting a freaking safety. Jesus criminy. Eagle safety suck out loud. 
I mean, they've had a problem there at that position for the last five years. Safety in there. Hey, get a back, too. More running backs. Build around Jalen here. You start building around Jalen this way. Get this. In the process, what you've done is you've created a position to improve your defense in the three p premium rounds. You've created depth in your offense and defensive lines. And if you're not happy with Jalen, you move off him after 2023 and you look what's in the draft or you look at free agency and go, look at what we've built here. And we still have draft assets that we've traded. And because we have a young team, our cap's not through the roof like the Cowboys. The Cowboys are in purgatory right now. People have to be cut. The Eagles are not in any peril with that. I don't want Goodwin Lawrence. I want somebody like Julio Jones that knocks fuckers out or A.J. Brown. If you're going to be a run attack team, your quarterback struggles with accuracy as it is. Well, can he improve that? Lamar Jackson did. And most likely he will improve on that. Okay? You're going to build the team in the hopes. By the way, you're not going to worry about a really tough schedule next year because you were a wild card team. The Cowboys are going to have a tougher schedule because they're the division winner. The Cowboys will have a tougher schedule than you next year. That's also going to be an asset for you. Carl, I'm, hey, you know what, Carl? It, 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 I learned it from my coach. My coach showed me. Mike Williams, Joshua, Mike Williams I'm good with, but he, he, has, he had a microfracture when he came out of Clemson, and I want to know how that is today. You know, when, when Tom Telesco went and signed him, if you remember right, he missed a lot of his rookie season because he had a microfracture, and he had a microfracture surgery. I just want to know what his health is, okay? Hey, but Lawrence, again, how, how, you know, and know this, the, the Chargers are not a team that's going to go out and spend a shitload of money on people, okay? Smile says the Washington football team will have a better quarterback next year. Really? Where? Who? Could Garoppolo land there? If Jimmy Garoppolo landed in Washington, that would worry me if I was uh, the Eagles. That would worry me because Washington's not that far behind you. You know, they could chase Young back. They got a good defense. The line's not bad. They can run the ball. That would, that would bug me. If Garoppolo lands in Washington, boy, they improved that position overnight. And they struggle at that position. But yet, guess what? Ron Rivera's such a good coach, they still win ball games. Hey, a quarterback could change the direction of that of that division. Like, look at like watch this. Hey, and know this. I gotta tell you guys this. Okay. You know, we're all sitting here and we're not very happy with the production of Jalen Hurts or Nick Sirianni, right? From Sunday. If I'm the Dallas Cowboys, I'm also doing the same thing we're doing right now. You know what I'm saying to you about Dak? Jesus criminy. 75 million bucks. See, you know what the problem is with that, guys? Here's, here's the problem with that. 75 million bucks? This guy eats up an enormous part of your salary cap at 42 million per. Here, I want to show you this. Dak's 42, right? Dak's 42. Next year, Ezekiel Elliott's 18 million. Mari Cooper's 20. Five, six. That's $80 million of a $200 million salary cap on three dudes. Three dudes. This is where the Eagles catch him. Okay? Three dudes. Your offensive line, what are they, five million a pop? There's five of those guys. There's 25 million bucks. And I'm being generous here. I'm not even talking about your backups. So I haven't get this. There's 105 million with the O line, one wide receiver, one running back, and a quarterback. 
105 million bucks of your salary cap in Dallas is on five O linemen, one wide out, one running back, and a quarterback. There's 105 on eight guys. What about your backups? Got to spend another 15 on your backups at least. Maybe 10. Let's be fair. 10. Now you're at 115. What about the other wideouts and your tight ends? Got to be about 20 there. There's $135 million. Let's just say this. $135 million you spent on your offensive side of the football. You mean to tell me I only have $65 million for my defensive side of the ball? What about my special teams? The Dallas Cowboys are going to have to make massive cuts across the line. That football team will not look. That's why Jerry and Stephen Jones are pissed off today. They knew this was the year. I mean, I gave, look at it, $140 million just for the offense out of a $200 million salary cap. you got $60 million left for your defense. Okay. What about the Marcus Ware? What about them guys? Oh, what about your special teams guys, your backups? There is 53 guys on a roster. They must be $25 million over the cap right now. With nowhere to go. Marty Cooper, $20 million. Really? By the way, where was Ezekiel Elliott in that game? You paying that guy $18 million? Holy shit. You're the Eagles. You're sitting here right now. I, I look, you're, you're upset. You're upset, no question about it. But I'm looking at the trend needle, and it's green in Philly, and Kelly green at that in Philly, and it is red, fire engine red for the Cowboys going down. They're trending down, guys. They're trending down. Elliott Cup, uh, they'll wait for free agency in March to cut his ass. They'll try to get a deal, restructure something. How many yards did he have yesterday? I don't even remember him getting the ball, but a couple times. Hugh, thank you, man. Seals, you're right on all fronts. So this is the chance for the Eagles to do damage, man. But again, know this. Wild card in the room is Howie Roseman. Wild card in the room is Roseman. Okay? Hey, and know this about the Cowboys, guys. Eagle guys, follow me here. Don't worry about Dallas. Don't worry about them. Since 1998, they're 3 and 10 in the postseason. Until they change that trend, nothing will change. As long as the Joneses own the team, why would this change? It's not. There's no Jimmy Johnson coming out of that locker room. Okay. Andrew says 31 yards for a guy you're paying 18 million bucks for. <laughs> okay. Look at that. Man, <laughs> dude, you got to come in to the office and you got to have a come to Jesus conversation with a bunch of guys on your team. I love you, dude, but I got to cut you. Okay. The kid Parsons, you're lucky he's on a rookie deal. You're lucky. He's the most valuable player on your team, including the quarterback you just gave $75 million to. You're lucky he's on a rookie deal. They struck gold with that. Dan, look at Hertz's and Dak's stats from yesterday, please. I did, Muhammad. I did. I did. 14 penalties for the Cowboys. Undisciplined. How about that whole fiasco with the uh, punt team? Okay? They actually goes in their favor. They send the punt team back out again. Why would you do that? Even Troy Aikman went, what is that? Total chaos on the sidelines. The two teams that shit the bed big time, coaching-wise, yesterday were the Cowboys and the Eagles. Totally shit the bed. Cowboys looked more embarrassing, though, actually. My problem with the Eagles was Jalen not being able to find single coverage. I got to take a timeout. Got to take a timeout, guys. Please hit the like button. Talk a little bit more about what we saw there. Also, 
Something that I want to make a comparison with the NBA and the NFL. I want to do that next as well. Guys, you've been absolutely spectacular. Please keep it right here on the National Football Show. <laughs> 